It's the only wrestling podcast on earth with two former Major League Baseball All-Stars. Jason Kindle, who is not here. Dimitri Young is here. Hi, Dimitri. What's up, Dennis? You learned a lot from the last time I called on you. Good job, buddy. One (laughs) four-time Stanley Cup champion, Darren McCarty. What's going on, Darren? Good day, gents. Good day. All good here in the D. Lars Fredrickson from Rancid, the rock star. What's up, my friend? I know. I told you I'd do it once. Uh, once. You know, like this. What's up? What's up is that you finally fucking pronounced my name correctly, you asshole. I've been practicing. I agree. I've been practicing. And guys, thank you. thank you, guys. The guest list keeps getting better on the show. We've gone from Kurt Angle to was it Sammy Callahan to Chris Saban. Now we have. One of my favorite people, one of the guys I love to watch, one of the nicest men on social media. I can't put him over enough. John Silver. John, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, thanks All for right. having me. So I gotta ask you this. Are you a sports fan? Do you do you know who some of these guys are? Uh yes. I mean, well, so when I was younger, I would watch I watched every single sport and I was huge on all of them. Then when I got a little older, I kind of fell out of most sports, and I'd only watch football. I think because I would bet on it, and then uh, and then UFC. So um, Dimitri Young, yeah, I know, I know you, man. <laughs> uh, um, Thank you, John. My hockey knowledge isn't as good though, unfortunately. Um, um, I'm from New York, I'm a Rangers fan, so I know some of like the old, the probably like late '90s, early 2000s Rangers, but. That's that's all the knowledge I had in that's hockey. That's my era, bro. That's I've just winning the Stanley Cups in the nineties. After you got done with the Rangers <laughs> with Matt in ninety three, we we decided to take them. But uh, no, that's uh, it's it's phenomenal to see, you know, the, be, behind the scenes a little bit more. And I'm a I'm a huge fan of the being the elite and the dark order and the characters and the, and the stuff that you put out with the belts. I mean, I, that's must see to TV that I've tuned into every week. It sort of starts off. It's part of it, let alone your wrestling, even going back with, you know, you, you and Alex Reynolds being the Beaver brothers and doing all your combat and stuff like that. My thing is, is I just want to know one thing out of your mouth. Are you having as much fun you know, as it looks like you're having, and what's wh- what makes AEW this like different than than the other organizations that you've been a part of? Oh yeah, I'm definitely I'm definitely having as much fun as it looks like I'm having. I'm having a blast. Uh, it's such a fun job, and uh, I think it was finding like my like niche there because for a while I was just I was basically like a background character there. I feel like you know like. I was just kind of like uh, I wore the mask and I was, you know, behind Stu and Uno. And then once I'm like, you know what, let's start doing stuff on BTE. That's when everything really like started to really, you know, make the ball roll, you know. Um, And then once we started doing once we did the first thing, it just kind of like like all the comments were about our little skit that we did for like 30 seconds. Um, So it it's definitely I think AEW, there's a lot of freedom, and that's why a lot of people are having fun. Um, no one ever says, Here, here's your script. No one ever says, hey, you can't – well, unless it's, like, really messed up stuff. It's like no one's like, you can't say that or you can't do this or you can't do that. So especially BT, I have – I could say – I've I've said some stuff. I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I'm going to get in trouble or someone's going to see this and be mad, but – I haven't got yelled at yet, <laughs> so uh, all the crazy shit I say on there and do, like, it's been super cool, and it actually is, that is 100% why I'm on TV more now, getting more matches on TV is because of BTE, you, so it's cool. You know, I'll, I'll get my question, because uh, these guys are going to nerd out, and it's great, I love sitting back and watching it. Uh, just recently, we've heard a lot of news about your other competitors, and I don't really want to make this about them because it's a ton of news. But your time slot now has freed up from, if the rumors are correct, that you guys won't really have a head-to-head competition in, in television on Wednesday nights. Do you think that's going to hurt or help you? Not not you personally, but AEW, the product, going forward? Because, quite frankly, as a fan, 
I kind of like the fact that you guys went head to head. You made a choice. We're all AEW fans here, and it it made both products step up and put out the best they could in a head to head situation. If they move to another night, do you see anything changing? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think um, there's ever been like, a, hey, we need to beat them right now. Like, obviously, we always want to have the better ratings, have the better show. But I don't think we're going to slow down. Like, we're, we're – I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't see a slowing down. I don't think it's uh, when they make – when the show gets put together, they're like, oh, well, we need – this time slot, this, this match doesn't look good. We need to make something crazy happen so that we get the ratings or that's, it's, it's really not like that. I mean, even now the last few shows you're seeing some of the people that haven't been on TV as regularly have matches. So I feel like we're, we're not worrying about the rate. I mean, you you worry about the ratings, but you're not like, we need to beat them here. We got to beat them there. It's just, we're just putting together a TV show at this point. And, um, we're trying to do the best we can do every single week. So, that was my gotcha question. I'm out, guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, I was watching be the elite to, to get to see more of the behind the scenes stuff. And how many takes does it take for you guys? Because I was giggling my ass off watching the different skits, especially you know, rest in peace, Brody Lee. He come in there with the papers, and why would he always pick on you? And they always call you a kid. And you're like, but I'm 29 years old. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I mean, that energy that you have, like, did you take acting class? Well, what kind of athlete were you when you was growing up? Um, so I never took I never took acting classes. Um, I did actually, like, for a very short amount of time, I actually did a little bit of stand-up comedy. Uh, but back when I was doing that, that's when, my like, the job I got was, like, I worked nights, and then – I'd wrestle on the weekend. So I'm like, oh, I can't do any shows if I'm working or wrestling every week. So right, obviously wrestling was I was more important to me than stand up comedy. But um, those takes we, we would take sometimes, especially when Brody was there, it would definitely be a few takes. I mean, he would always make us like laugh. <laughs> it was possible. So what happened was he would always make me laugh and then he would do it so much on purpose. He would get right in my face and start screaming. I, I couldn't keep it together. So we started to do the whole thing where he'd say, are you crying? <laughs> are you crying right now? <laughs> I'm like, okay, if I just go like this while he's yelling at me, I'm, I'm crying. Sure. But I'm, I'm really hysterically laughing. Um, so at first it would take a, a lot with Brody. And now it's, now I think I've, I'm the one that's now making everyone laugh, especially Anna. And for some reason, Stu was always pretty good at not laughing. And now he's recently been laughing a lot. <laughs> but he'll like, if he laughs, he doesn't just kind of, he, he just breaks super hard. So I'm like, oh, we got, we can't even keep that one. We got to do it again. Uh, Anna at least will cover her face and kind of, you know, do that. But um, it, sometimes we get straight through in the first try, which is great. And sometimes we got to do it definitely a few times. You know, I mean, okay. It's Go interesting ahead, that you were uh, talking about how how fun it is where you're at now. And I was wondering if that's as a result, because there's a lot of CZW guys over in AEW and pro wrestling guerrilla guys. And it seems like, you know, it, the, the chemistry is already kind of there because a lot of these guys, you know, we've all been in the same promotions. You know, you, I mean, you were you, you were the champion over there in CD, CZW for a little bit. It's, but do you find that the, that that commonality of having, you know, because all of you motherfuckers work really hard to get to where you're at. And it's good to see like, you know, Cage up there, you know, and, and he was a, a, a PWG guy, you know, when I first clocked him. So do you, do you find that like, it makes it more comfortable locker room, more easier to, uh, to um, I don't know, communicate or just relax. You know, it's not like a, it's like someplace you've already been before is kind of my point. Yeah. I mean, it's, that, that definitely helps a lot when, you know, some of my best friends work in the company um so when i'm trying to think of something funny it's easy to go to them like i've obviously alex i've known forever but i've known chuck taylor trent orange cassidy for like 10 plus years uh i've known so many people i'd rather wrestle that wrestled brian cage like six years ago uh so many people the young bucks all these guys i've wrestled or met for the most part there's very few people actually that i haven't met before aew that's why when we did our first show, it was like a breath of fresh air 
because we weren't like one of the people that were contacted before we never got like that we are a this person is elite so we were just extras our first show technically and um we got to the locker room and i'm you know we're used to wwe we've done extra work for wwe so we're used to like standing there in our suits and not want to talk to anyone and scared but i'm like oh these everyone here is my friend <laughs> like like I, even the guys in management i'm friends with so it was um it definitely makes it a lot easier to you know, be yourself and like open up and stuff like that when you already know everyone. So it was good. That's probably explains a lot of the su success of the show. And honestly, because it seems like everybody has already has some sort of relationship and there's no bullshit, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, definitely helps. Well, it, it seems like, like you just said, is that as we see the big narrative about, you know, the Bullet Club, the Young Bucks, the Omega, all that intertwined impact, you guys with with Chuck Taylor, the best friends, the dark or you guys also have something to know each other. So it, it's you also have angles to play off and it's to show. I want to get into the wrestling. Who are the guys, your favorite guys that you have wrestled or, you, you know, that you have your bucket list that you've knocked off? And then who's on your bucket list that you'd love to wrestle? Because I and, and before I forget, you're freaking I love the story of your overalls, the Brody Lee copies, and the way you came out and, and represented, dude. I know that he was smiling like we all were, dude, because that was so love. And that, that whole, what you guys did and what you continue to do with uh, Brody Jr., negative one, and just how natural. And, you know, I love it, like, when he smacks you and, and stuff like that. And it, you get that it's coming from the old man. So, Speak about the wrestling part of it, you know, because that's a big, cause you're a great wrestler, bro. Like you, you're, you're, you're a little guy in a small, you're, you're like Chris Draper. He was my centerman right now. Uh -huh. You're five, four. He might be five, five, maybe a little bit bigger, maybe five, six, but he's a little, one of those little uh, ginger fire plug redhead. But hey, yeah. like you built like you little stocky, but on the wrestling side, who, who have you wrestled that, was on your bucket list and who haven't you that is on. So when we see it, we'll know. I mean, it's, it's, those are, I mean, those are good questions. Uh, bucket list that I've wrestled. Um, I mean, I've wrestled Dustin, which is pretty cool. I mean, he's, uh, he's like my earliest memories of being a wrestling fan is gold dust. So yeah. getting to wrestle him multiple times, I, we've wrestled a few times actually, uh, is definitely pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head who else I've wrestled. Uh, already, let me let me well let me go to uh, people that are on but my, like my bucket list to wrestle still. Uh, yeah. Christian is going to be probably number one. He growing up, I think my favorites as a kid like changed for a while, but like my teenage years of being a wrestling fan, Chris Jericho and Chris Jericho and Kurt Angle were my favorites. So if I could actually bang out those both those two, that'd be. <laughs> Know if Kurt Angle ever come to AEW, but if he does, I want to wrestle him. So this is my well, two. I think that that comes across in your in your John in your John Silver, you know, the character or whatever. It's got both the not even styles, but the comedic. Because to me, that's what the you know the the way that Jericho, why he's a legend, is because he transcends titles. When you can transcend titles, when titles don't matter anymore. Right. You know, it's talking about like Sammy Callahan and TNA has sort of that. It's about the show. But but uh, that's the one thing that is 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 awesome. So we got to make that happen, Dennis. How are you going to make that happen for uh, Johnny here? Well, I just got him on the show. Let's get through the first date and then I'll make things happen for him. OK, well, <laughs> we don't kiss on the first date on this show, by the way, John. So you're safe. You don't kiss on any date, Dennis, because your fucking boyfriend's going to prove you like a fruit pie. Anyways, <laughs> so uh, back to do the Dark Order in the evolution of that whole group, which we all talk about all the time on the show. We are AEW nerds, as we said earlier at the top of the show. The the group is taking take has taken a very interesting roadmap from a dark sinister group to kind of a comedy group which i like do you 
do you have an idea or a roadmap in your head where you want this group to go from here on out? Because you guys are kind of in uncharted territory right now with the unfortunate timing of Brody Lee's death, a negative one son being involved in, you know, negative one being involved in the group. It, it seems like this interesting transition where we're all on this ride, but nobody knows where it's going. I mean, that's how a lot of stuff <laughs> happens here at AEW. There's always like a plan, but stuff always has to get changed. Uh, um, and that's not even just AEW, that's wrestling in general. Rather, just different things happen that make stuff change. So, um, I mean, we were kind of going into a, a different direction, um, obviously, even before Brody Lee passed, um, where obviously people started to recognize or people started to want to cheer me. And then they wanted to cheer also the dark water. Um, so that was, I mean, when, when Brody was still, uh, before he got sick, um, it was supposed to be a little like uh, Raven and Stevie Richards type vibe with us two. Oh, Ooh. wow. Yeah. He was supposed he's to be, serious. that's how Tony wanted it. He's like, Brody is the serious, badass, uh, ass kicker. And you're like his weird, goofy cheerleader in a sense. <laughs> like stevie was and you love him and you're let's say like your best friend but like we did the one thing where brody's we're all celebrating the ring and i grabbed the mic and i was like you're the man brody you're the man and they just punched me in the face like little <laughs> <laughs> like that was so that was the idea and then of course naturally that was me more likable and uh that would still make brody more of that tough angry you know bad guy um but then when he got sick and he wasn't on tv anymore we st slowly started to get like if you listen to the reaction of the crowd i was we were getting cheered big time um yeah. i know we don't have a lot of crowds there a lot of crowd a lot of people there but we had um i think we usually have around at least 500 people or so i think we we're around there and we did that battle royal where we, i got eliminated and the place went well super loud booze and everyone's like we gotta, you guys are just gotta be the good guys. It's good, you know. So, um, it wasn't like we had to change a lot, um, but it was more so instead of me just being me and Alex being just the good guys of the group. Uh, obviously now we're all the the faces now, you know. So, not a lot of it had to change, but um, it, you know, it kind of pushed the pushed us that way even further, I guess. Here, here's a question for you. Well, it's more of an observation for me, watching how the Dark Order came together and then Marty Scroll was supposed to be the exalted one and then it turned out to be Mr. Brody Lee, which was a beautiful swerve because I even thought that was going to be Matt Hardy when they both debuted at the same time. I started paying attention on AEW Dark when Anna Jay came upon the scene because she can't, used to come out in the top hat. She was the star of the show. And then she had losing streaks, and then y'all brought her in. She has superstar written all over her, and she's at, at such a young age. And I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a high school coach now after my 13 years, and I always look at the development part of it. And seeing that she is a star, what are you guys doing? Y'all are like mentors to her, obviously, because every performance that she comes out, whether it's with Ty Conti, or whatever it is, it's like all eyeballs are on dark order. And I feel it's because of her and the energy that you're funny as hell. That's all I got to say about that. That Johnny Hungy and you posing <laughs> like that. I'm like, dude, this little dude is a badass. <laughs> and, and, and I'm seeing a lot more personality. So it's just like, I, I like the mentorship part. So I'm, I'm like big with, with Anna Jay. I think she's going to be a phenomenal star in the future. Yeah. Uh, two things. First thing is Marty Scroll wasn't supposed to be the exalted one. Oh, uh, okay. Just the conversation of it. So originally, I remember. I mean, I remember being in catering at a show, and the way Matt Jackson talks is like very California. Like he's, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Like he, like he says stuff like it's not like he's kind of joking, but he, sometimes he's being like real. But he's like, yeah. He's like, I don't know. Like. Think about the dark order, like who's gonna be the exalted one? Like, uh, like I don't think Marty's gonna be right, but people kind of, I mean, it's an option. I think the main two, the first person we were told it was going to be was Matt Hardy. 
Um, but it wasn't like set in stone. And they said, well, it could be Brody. But at that point, Brody, I think I don't, he still, you know, wasn't a, a definite to come to the company. Matt Hardy was a definite. So I think he was leaning that way. And then once we kind of knew Brody was going to come, uh, they went with that direction, which I think is the better direction. Um, Matt would have, Matt would have brought us a different direction, which could have been cool too. But I think the way Brody did it was he, he played like that, that, you know, dickhead, like boss, like cult leader, like perfectly, I think. And I'll say Vince. I'll say a Vince, Vince yeah, yeah. type, but you know, yeah. like we all we all think of our, or the the general manager, the owner, the stereotype of, you know, the rich boss or whatever like that, the head of the corporation or whatever that figurehead is. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty <laughs> sick. We definitely had a Vince vibe uh at first. Then we kind of went a little away from that. Um, but with Anna J too, Anna J's, uh, she's a natural at, at wrestling. Like, um, there's some people like, she's like, I think her first match in AEW was like her seventh match ever, which is insane. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was something like that, like seventh or eighth match ever. And, uh, and so it's pretty insane how good she is. Like the, obviously she's only going to get better, but, um, and she has like a look where, you know, you see her you're like, oh, okay, I got to something she has like a a, a or yeah. to want to see what she's gonna do and she's she's good and she's like a super nice person so uh obviously we, like the dark water we all try to help each other we all talk a lot we all have a group text and stuff like that so um it's good to see that she's doing great and she's she gets better every single time she's in the ring all right before i get him i have one more quick question is it is negative one gonna be y'all's leader <laughs> I like him being uh, out there, and <laughs> I like when when they, when you raise a child to be become the king. I mean, that's just yeah, if, if I had my storyline dream, like like D Mac, I would I would like to see him continue because I, I I mean that that dedication show. I mean that that my eyes water, especially when yeah. you did the discus and and um won the match, and then you just stayed down, and then Eric Redbeard or Eric Rowan. WWE then came out there and picked you up, man. I, I mean, I know I, I was crying, and and I, I, I was, yeah, that, I mean, it was just like how much he meant to everybody because we all had somebody that passed away, and you know, we didn't know what they really meant to us until they were gone. And I mean, you was visible about it. Oh yeah, um, that was definitely a uh, a tough but special moment. Um, I'm, I'm a very emotional person so like I, I was crying the whole day when I went out there for the match I'm like okay and I have something to think about the match so I was fine and then once I hit the lariat uh, I, I just I, it was like I got fucking punched in the face and like it, everything just I started bawling um but uh, yeah that was that was just you know definitely a special moment a special match I'll definitely remember forever but uh with negative one uh <laughs> He, maybe he'll be the leader eventually, but he so he can't beat all the shows because he he actually lives I think he lives about three hours away, um, and he has school. <laughs> you know he has to go to school. <laughs> so uh, I think his mom. I was talking to his mom, and uh, she's we'll try to get him to I think at least one of the tapings every month. Um, that's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. so it's a part of the That'd family. Be, right. That's and that's the whole thing. I think uh, that's you know the beauty of it just knowing that uh you know 10 10 i would your, your buddy 10 there cody uh that's what he said he said you guys are only doing what brody would have done for your kids you know that that says that says a lot in the family and that and i think the dimitri's point that was an emotional it was like a it was one of the most emotional memorial services that was so real between the the especially in wrestling because we all shared in it but it was also uh i don't know there was some you know celebration out of it and stuff what you know my last question before i gotta go bro and and i gotta i gotta you to get one time can you do it for me dude can we do it together <laughs> and a one and a two can we do it on a one and a two <laughs> Are we doing and a one and oh. a two <laughs> And a skiddly diddly do. Skiddly do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, my man. <laughs> I got to head off, but I'll be watching you. Continue the success to all you guys. And 
Keep doing what you're doing, Johnny. So if you got a big fan over here. Uh, thank you, Take man. Take care, it's guys. You got peace, D Matt. Down the road. All right, boys. We'll see you later. See you, bud. Lars? Peace. Yeah, you know, I wanted to ask you because it's so what's going on with the Dark Order? What I've always kind of sort of referenced it, or the closest thing I could reference it to is Kevin Sullivan and the Dungeon of Doom, you know? And I, I always kind of see you as that Kevin Sullivan because of your body, you know? And I'm not trying to call you a short dog or anything, but uh, <laughs> like DMAC, you know? Um, but, uh, my, uh, it, you know, cause it's kind of the shades of the, of a little bit of the Purple Haze, Kevin Sullivan era, but then you got that sort of Dungeon of Doom kind of thing. Was there a psychology uh, from that era that you were that you brought in that you're bringing in purposely to 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 the Dark Order? And uh, the next half of my question is: is you've been very accomplished in singles and in tag teamed uh, wrestling, and I don't want the stock. I, I just want to wrestle. What is your actual favorite thing to do? Uh, don't give me the bullshit answer of like I just want to work. I want to know what you're really like. <laughs> Do you like to be a tag in a tag team? Because you you know you've done a lot there, and you've also been you know a champion. Like I said about CZW, what do you prefer? And then the Kevin Sullivan question, if you will, please. Okay. Um, so I never even, to be honest, I didn't I didn't really think. And now that you mentioned the Kevin Sullivan thing, I'm like, okay, that actually does make a lot of sense. But that's not at least where my brain was thinking. I was trying to think. So this was actually, I guess, this way of thinking hurt me a little bit but eventually it worked out i was thinking i'm thinking cult uh, so when we got put in this gimmick i'm like okay this is a cult let me look up you know stuff on netflix on colds uh <laughs> alex was watching uh he watched a few uh, documentaries and he would like try to use different like phrases or um stuff like that that people would say in reference so that was so that was how we were kind of like um getting ready ready for this you know for this gimmick um then so the re reason why that kind of hurt me a little bit is because um me thinking being i'm in a cult right i want to i'm thinking i'm brainwashed like brainwashed dude so i was like i always had like this stone face like this you know and i'm trying to think of like i shouldn't have this big personality because that's not what a cult guy would do like unless it's like something very wacky but um, um, so that thinking actually hurt me because uh, Tony didn't like that. He's like, he thought I had no personality. <laughs> he would say, he's like, yeah, person. Uh, that's what I heard. He said, he's like, I have no personality, but I never got to show it because I didn't think that's how my character should, should act. Um, so like, I guess the, the thought, like the thought was the, was just, we went full on like cult uh, documentaries and stuff like that. But um, I do actually see now. I see the red, like the Kevin Sullivan thing makes a lot of sense actually. But um, well, yeah, heard first, yeah. <laughs> but um, the other question. Oh, do I like uh, tag wrestling or uh, singles? So yeah, no bullshit answers, John. <laughs> I've probably, I probably. This is what happens if I do tag wrestling for a while. I'm eventually like. I want to like I want to do some singles like, like I want to be by myself uh there's more like creative freedom mm. uh, not that I have it but I don't have to worry about other stuff but if I do singles for a while I'm like damn I want to get back in their tag like it's just a different dynamic um me and Alex I've known him since I was 14 uh I've been tagging with him since I was like 17 is when we started tagging I think um to say my favorite it, it, it's it's gonna it's gonna change i might say singles in a way because there is definitely more freedom but um it's just a different way it, it like it's it's i don't mind either if that makes sense but it's like if i'm doing singles it's all on me right? and the other guy i'm wrestling but it's like we have to put this match when it comes to tag some stuff i guess gets a little repetitive on um like I guess in a way. So I think, I think singles, you get a little more creative freedom where if I want to do something, I, I, I get to do it pretty much unless it really doesn't fit. But in a tag, it's like, okay, I want to do something in the beginning, but 
you know, I'm not going to, you know, Alex is going to be the one that starts. And then by the time I get in, it doesn't make sense. So it's like some ideas I've had in my head. I want to try out. I never get, to, I, I haven't got to really do too much yet, but um, I guess I, if I had to leave one way, I guess I'd say singles, but I really love tagging with Alex too. So. You know, when we were talking about negative one a little bit earlier, I did have this image in my head. It's, did you guys hold them up like the Lion King at some point? Can can you do that for us on one of your shows? Just give us that Lion King moment. Oh, I don't think That's he'd a want. Great idea. I don't know if you if you've seen the my my Twitter, but or my Instagram, I posted. Uh, I think the day after the tribute show, he he likes to beat us up. <laughs> so he likes. <laughs> With ten, he likes to do the Jungle Boy thing on the shoulders. He mm-hmm. loves to. Do- but if <laughs> if you say anything to him, he's like, "What'd you say, Silver? I'm gonna get my kendo stick." And he, just, he beat the crap out of us with kendo sticks. Uh, I had, I'm like, ah, I I didn't feel the kendo stick before he was hitting us. So I'm like, oh, you can hit me in the head. Literally, I had a whole freaking line like that. <laughs> I'm like, damn. <laughs> but uh. He likes to be the boss. He wants to be like Brody. So he'll, if we're doing something that he's like, didn't tell us to do, he's yelling at us or he's trying to throw papers at us or beat us up or do anything. I want to, I want to steer this back to you. And we, you're, you're on a show with a bunch of guys who are accomplished in their own fields. Lars with Rancid, Dimitri's a major league baseball all-star. Jason's an all-star. You have PD Williams, who was an X division champion. Uh, Darren McCarty, four-time Stanley Cup champion, we all, in our minds, want to be pretend wrestlers. And Mm -hmm. I think Lars will agree with this. We have, like, our characters planned ahead months and years in advance that we're never, ever going to do. I don't get off my couch. I play video games, so I'm not going to be him. You, as a professional wrestler, do you have an evolution of the John Silver character kind of in your mind played out like years in advance where you want to take take this guy? Or have you kind of given that up as this journey has taken you forward? Um, I've had ideas, but it's always like it's it I don't ever want to like force it. It has to happen more naturally. So um different ideas for myself and how like I guess myself as a character would, would do or possibly would do. And it all depends on how the crowd is reacting. If, if I'm getting some crazy reactions, then you got to keep on doing what you're doing, maybe slightly evolve it. But once those reactions start to go down, which happens to a lot of people, you gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta change a little bit. You gotta do something different, something unique. Um, so I have little ideas that I could change myself into a little bit. I mean, I didn't really get to do it, which, like a lot and i don't think i've even said i definitely haven't haven't said it on tv yet but like uh my character on the indies was the beat man john silver which is still pretty similar to what i'm doing right now and i haven't really said it much on tv itself but i've said it a little bit on bt but um it's like a it's a different slightly slightly different than what i'm doing right now uh it's kind of similar but it's slightly different and um then i have another gimmick i had in mind eventually it's like I don't know, like like you guys probably do too. I just constantly think about rather moves, rather my character, where I can change it to. Uh, like I, I do, I do it all the time. So, well, in the creative process, when you you know when you're doing, you're thinking about you know whether it be um, maturing the character or whatever. Do you are you also thinking of your wrestling style as well? Um, because you know, younger guys are going to move a lot quicker. As we get older, we move a little slower, and we have to kind of adapt to what our bodies are telling us, right? So, um, I guess my question to you: over the years, as you've kind of matured in in in, in professional wrestling, do you find that you 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 you're doing less or you're doing more? Um, I think the last few years, I've I think I've, in a sense, done more, but it's. I realized like, and this works for me is like, I do that like spurts of stuff and then it's like a downtime if that makes sense. So um, like I might do that crazy uh, comeback where I take everyone out in a row, but then right after that, it's a, it's a breathing moment where the crowd could digest it. So I, I guess I do more cause it's a different style than a lot of people do. It's like a, I try to think of it like I'm a freaking ping pong, not ping pong. I guess ping pong ball or uh, 
what's the freaking arcade game the freaking ball pinballs yeah pinball game you know like it's just bouncing around everywhere um but i don't think it does means i'm actually doing more i'm just moving faster and going a little harder and uh i think i think i realized that a few years ago so i, I had a match actually i was really depressed in my wrestling career like four around four years ago or maybe five years ago like i wasn't getting booked uh i like hit a plateau and i'm like something has to change and around that time is when i started doing kickboxing and i had a match at beyond wrestling against uh leo rush and i'm like i'm gonna use my kickboxing and jiu-jitsu skills and i'm just gonna you know move like i'm just gonna hit hard and you know just make this look like we're actually hitting each other and uh the crowd was like holy shit that was something different but before that it was wrestling very similar to like everyone else like I had a very like generic independent wrestler style, but now I think it's just a little bit different because it's kind of like my own thing. Well, do you think that, um, how long do you feel like, I mean, that kind of answers my question, but it also triggers another thing is like, you know, finding yourself, you know, mm-hmm. like you said, you, you went to martial arts and then was like, and you were like, oh, now I got I can put this there. Um, wh- uh, where do, what do you do now to challenge yourself to, to have, maybe a similar experience like you did with the martial arts to bring that to the ring. Like, you know, is there anything out there right now that you're like, you know, you said you're kind of a com a stand up comic, you know, these things, which I, I think comes through. So like the, the shaping of, of this character, what else do you think that, you know, you might be interested in bringing to? Um, I, I feel like any, like people don't realize how a gimmick could be, almost nothing like just by saying you know one little word then i'd be like oh that's that guy like i said johnny hungy once and now the crowd chants it like crazy i get, I get email I love uh, it. about it all the time so just like one little thing like that right. really just could take you know what you're doing to the next level like me being me I think it's like right now, if I didn't say Johnny Hungy, it's fine. People still cheering, but now they're like, Oh, Johnny, like people would call me Johnny Hungy. They don't even know. Like, they don't even say John Silver. like, Oh, that's Johnny Hungy. Like, so this little, that's like, I think such an important thing is like finding something and it could be so, so simple and just having that connect with people. It could be, and some people do it like with a, it like moves in the ring uh like this different like this one little spot that they do that's different and kind of unique and like maybe funny a little bit or whatever that resonates with the crowd or it could be something that you say um so the way you do a pose like you know randy orton i don't even know if he still does it that at this pose like as a kid i was doing that freaking pose all the time so it's like just those little things that resonate with the crowd you just gotta find and like on the crowd, like when I was in the Indies too, I started calling myself the Meat Man. I'm like, that's like silly, and the people <laughs> like, but the crowd loved chanting Meat Man. They wouldn't even call, you know, they wouldn't chant Silver as much. They they want to chant Meat Man. So it's like a fun little nickname, and I feel like some a meaty dude, like it makes sense, you know. So I think just like even like watching movies and TV shows and like, and just kind of taking something someone says sometimes even helps, but. Right now, it's I'm I'm actually going back to uh, I, with COVID, I haven't been able to do anything. But tomorrow, I'm actually going back to like uh, uh, jujitsu and kickboxing classes, and um, I don't. know. It's just like it's just gotta find something. A lot of people, it's hard to find. It's really really difficult. But Johnny Hungy is something I've been saying for years and years, and I'm just like I'm gonna say it on BTE, and then it takes off, you know. Well. Part of what Lars asked, and I was thinking the same, along those same lines of um, goal oriented and, and what, what are your future goals? And when you're our age, I'm 47, Lars is what, 40? You're 40, Lars? Uh, I'm 26, Dimitri. Oh, you're 26? <laughs> oh, you're younger than uh, jo- Johnny Hungy. I'm, four, I'm so 49, when it's- <laughs> 49, 49. And Dennis is 42. So your end game when it's said and done and you're finished um is it about the world titles the tag team titles um 
eventually being a star in WWE or in AEW stay and, and make a serious mark there. I mean, the future is now in your hands because, I mean, you've done all these things to put yourself on the map. And like you said, you didn't get the, we are, you know, we are elite or anything like that. And, you know, what, what is your end game? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm the type of guy that wants to do it all. I want to, you know, I, I don't want to just, I'm not just here just to be happy that I'm here. And, and unfortunately that happens with some people. They're just kind of happy to be there. I wish I am happy, happy to be here, but I want to win. I want to win every belt in AEW. Uh, I want to be the biggest star in AEW. I want to do uh, movies and TV shows. And um, I just want to keep on being the biggest star I could possibly be, have the most fun I could have, make the most money I can make. <laughs> I mean, I feel like if that's not where you're trying to go, it's then you're going to hit your plateau. Then you're going to get stuck somewhere. Um, and it like, like we were stuck somewhere and then we, we did something to better ourselves that got us, you know, TV time, you know, they got us matches. Like, I don't think I've ever, I think till like June was the first time I had a, Oh, actually I had like one other match. I had one match on TV from January to June, one match. Wow. Uh, and because they, I was an, I wasn't, I wasn't even an afterthought. I was less than an afterthought. I was just kind of there, you know, uh, but once we started doing BTE, like we we made like them take notice. We made you know people like everyone take notice. So I always want to just keep on getting better and just keep on improving. But definitely AEW title is a uh, championship is the 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 goal. That's the the top goal. And everything I mentioned was the is the goals. I think once you get comfortable with this spot you're at, you, then you're you start to you know go down. Like you can never get comfortable. Well, it's, it seems like the one thing that you hear from a lot of wrestlers is the fact, the creative part, right? And just, you know, trying to be themselves is hard enough. But then you get these companies like AEW and Impact who are like, who, who nurture that. And then, mm -hmm. you know, Johnny Hungy comes, right? Or whatever happens. And it's like, it's such, a, it's changing this world of professional wrestling as we know it for the better, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, did you, last question for me, did you ever see that coming? Did you ever see that there was gonna be a time where like the inmates sort of run the asylum in, the, in that sense with, with their, uh, their creative? Um, like with wrestling in general, no. Uh, but once I got to AEW, um... I started to see it more and more. So at first, I, you know, I'm still in that, was still in that, what I know of WWE and what I've seen and heard. I've known people, you know, I've known people that wrestled there. And I hear it's just what they want. Like, here's your script. Here's this. So like, I just was never prepared for when I got here. And then it's, we're basically like, we're doing stuff. Like we're talking about it, you know, like even the stuff that happened recently with Hangman, like, it's stuff we just talked about. And then we just said, Hey, this is what we want to do. And then it's, we did it on TV. <laughs> it wasn't like, you know, that it was what we wanted to do. It's what we all talked about. And then we said, That's Hey, cool. this is idea. And then it happened on TV and people loved it. I mean, you know, they'd love to see it. So. Well, it's kind of uh, like if you go in and try to tell a band what's set to play. It's like the band knows the, you know, their thing. That's what I've always found strange about the wrestling thing. It's like, you know, guys that, you know, fight for who they want to be eventually become these huge superstars even though they've been pushed down and i, I can name you know a few my, my personal friends or whatever but lastly i want to end with this and get stop getting lost is there one guy in the company right now that you want to get your hands on and want to have a match with this uh, i'm gonna I mean, haven't had a match with yet uh i'm gonna go i gotta say again chris jericho i mean he's he's one of my favorites of all time, one of the greatest of all time. Um, and I think I could learn a lot from him too. Um, he, yeah. And he's also like, he's someone that's actually helped us a lot. Um, someone being like a star the way he is, you could, he could be that and just kind of just do his job and go home. But he's actually, he's there to help. And yeah, when we were, um, he's one of the, the people that when, he found out that we weren't on a full-time deal. Uh, he went up to, to Tony and was like, Hey, these guys need full-time contracts. So 
Uh, a few people actually did too. Brody was one of them as well. Uh, but he went up to they went up to Tony. They said, "Hey, these guys are awesome. I don't know how. I, I don't know why you're not on full time deals right now." And then <laughs> 10, 15 minutes later, we got our full time contract. So wow. uh, not only That's do I awesome. want to because um, don't give these guys any ideas. They do not get full time podcasting deals on here. Okay. This you not- know, I've, I've known Jericho probably fifteen years, and I will say that he would fight for for me and Dimitri no problem. I'll give him a call right now. He better bring his lawyer. So, so, so stop it, Dennis. We're not indentured servants here. Not yet. <laughs> but uh, I think just that would be a great match. It'd be fun. It'd be like a, a big moment for me. Oh, so I, now I just remembered too, someone that I wrestled that I always wanted to. I think that was a question before. Uh, Matt Hardy. One of my favorite. The Hardy boys are my favorite tag teams of all time. And we got to wrestle them recently. So that's going back to that question, like, 20 minutes ago but but yeah uh matt hardy's another one dimitri i'm gonna ask my final question then you can wrap up the show with your final question and then i'll let you get john out of here my my question is i know a bunch of wrestlers who don't have the love for the industry who will just get in wrestle and leave where do you still have that love do you still watch as much wrestling as you can or or is it kind of business now for you um, it's, it's actually, it's a good question. Cause it, it does become more business. Um, not saying I don't love it anymore. Cause I'll like, but it, I can't watch, um, like current wrestling as like, especially like, I, like it's hard to get into the, the current wrestling when I know everyone I've wrestled them. I know, you know, like it's good to see them and watch how they wrestle and what they're doing, but like as a storyline purposes and stuff like that. So like, I haven't watched WWE in at least four years. Um, I like to watch our show and see what, what we're doing and what's going on and how stuff is happening here. So it's a little bit different, but it's also, I know everything that's going to happen. So it's hard to watch it as a fan as well, our own show, because we know it's, you know, I know what's happening. Um, but I still go back and watch like uh, certain people and actually I've, uh, What's his name? Uh, the Blade. I was his Instagram story. I forgot what match he was watching today. He posted. I think he was watching uh, Bret Hart and uh, Bret Hart and the British Bulldog versus Owen Hart and Jimmy Anvil Neidhart. And I'm like, shit, I really want to go back and watch that right now. Uh, so like, I like to watch older stuff. I like to watch stuff like Kurt Angle and older Chris Jericho and. Um, but I, it's hard to watch this, the now product. That just, I don't know. It's just, for me, it's hard. Demetri- Not bad. It's just like, I know all these people. I've wrestled these people, you know? Mm-hmm. So not to shit on anyone or any product. Well, but, uh, uh, to, to kind of piggyback, because like I said, I sit there and I'll watch wrestling with Petey. And Petey cannot watch it as a fan. He'll be like, Oh, that headlock, he put it on wrong. Or he's starting to break it down like an analyst. And I think that's kind of what you're saying is you can't sit there and watch it as a fan. You kind of break down, be like, "Uh uh-oh, I bet you he's going to go into this transition move here. And they go in and go, yep, see? So it's no longer the love. You're just kind of businessing it. Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, especially now, especially the now stuff. Like, if I watch, like, other people – from the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s, I could kind of watch a little bit more as a fan. Um, but now it's like I'm dissecting everything. Uh, I'm like, oh, well, that was weird. And then it might, like, depends on some people. I'll be like, oh, they should have switched this spot. It would have been, you know, the crowd would have been a little bit like, I just started to dissect it too much. And it's, it's still, I still like to watch it, but it's like, as a fan, like trying to like really get in the moment and go crazy. Sometimes it's difficult, but when some people have really good matches, then that actually helps bring out the fan in me. Um, there's definitely been some matches uh, here at AEW where I'm like, oh, sh- they're like, this is a banger. Like they're getting me. I want to freak. I'm going nuts right now. So um, it does happen, but it depends on with AEW. It's just like, I know storyline wise, I kind of know everything that's going to happen. So I got to watch their matches more as a fan, if that makes sense. Like, but certain people and like, the Young Bucks always make, you know, always having great matches. Kenny Omega, like we have so many good wrestlers that it's it's actually easy to kind of get into a you know, act like a fan when they wrestle, you know. So, um, yeah. <laughs> 
Dimitri? Well, I'm surprised nobody asked this question. We always seem to ask, you know, uh, did you go to a wrestling school or who was your trainer when you first got into the business? And do you have a wrestling school or do you help out at a wrestling school? Um, so I started at a, uh, this place in Long Island called uh, MYWC, the New York Wrestling Connection. And um, the head trainer was Mikey Whipwreck. And um, that was that was pretty terrifying because I think like a few months before I started training, I watched the rise and fall of ECW and uh, they have a whole section that was about Mikey Whipwreck. Um, so I'm like, oh, this is this is, you know, that's this is going to be my trainer now. And he's he's actually he's a great guy, super nice, super helpful, but he could be kind of like scary. You know, like he's kind of intimidating, actually. So I got him there. I was 14 years old when I started training. So I go in there as this little kid and I see Mikey Ripwreck and I'm like a little fanboy. And I'm like, and he's just like, you know, he was kind of like talking to me. He's like a 14 year old kid. He's joking around and stuff like that. But I'm like, I'm scared. I don't want to talk. I'm, you know, it was just very intimidating. But um, He's a great trainer. He trains so many people that are on TV. Uh, me, Alex, Tony Nice, Kurt Hawkins, Zach Ryder, uh, Jay Lethal, Amazing Red. Like, he's trained a lot of people. Um, uh, so, it was just um, – yeah, that's, where, that's how I started. And it was – he's a great trainer. So, I'm happy that I went to that school. John? I, I think we all still have a million different questions, and hopefully we will have another opportunity to talk to you. Hopefully we didn't keep you too long or bore you with yeah. us fanboying out with you. <laughs> of course not. I'm good. <laughs> Where can people find you online? Because, like I said, you're one of the more more interactive guys. You get in there and you talk with the fans. A lot of the guys just post social medias and the pro wrestling tea links. Where can people find you to interact with you? Um. I mean, mostly on uh, my Twitter and my Instagram. Um, they're both my uh, handle is you don't have OnlyFans. <laughs> no OnlyFans, unfortunately. Uh, I would make a lot of money. I get asked that all the time. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that is. Don't worry. Uh, okay. It's really like porn. Uh, yeah. Well, then like I should. Your, say. your own like you don't have to. Some people don't have you don't have to post porn. I think, but it's like that's where they go. Yeah, yeah okay. it's basically porn um but <laughs> my twitter and my instagram is silver number one and the number is spelled out and the one is just the one <laughs> oh, interesting nice john once again AEW dynamite thank you so much for joining us yeah. uh we really geeked out over you this is this listen we i think we were more excited for you than we were for kurt angle i'm not even gonna lie <laughs> oh that's awesome so <laughs> The fact that he's wearing an Umberto's uh, hoodie, hoodie is pretty damn cool, too, because I've been there a few times. Really? Oh, yeah. Wait, New York? Yeah. In Long Island. Long Island. <laughs> Clams, right? That's like around the block for me. Well, I've been there three times with <laughs> Gestapo from Murphy's Law. So he's, he's oh, doing yeah. I mean, I have no glue. <laughs> oh, anyways uh thank you so much guys uh for hanging out john i really appreciate it this was this week's wrestling perspective